how the system really is working all together. All signs work together, really, in the dialectical game that's put out there. And they use deception. They must always get the compliance of the public. You must get them on board with every part of the agenda. And um, across the whole world now we're getting uh, the supposed color revolutions where people suddenly uh, decide they want something called democracy. And I hope once they get it, they can come back over to our countries and show us how it's done. Because we've never had it ourselves. But the mainstream media are all on board with it. The same mainstream media that keep you in the dark about all the big things that are happening to you and who never uh, have a, a cry out when we're getting massively taxed or raped and, and pillaged by the banks or your own governments. You know, the media is very quiet on these topics, but suddenly they, they're your friend. And you're all forgetting that with this Egyptian thing that's going on over there. You're all forgetting it. You're getting caught up in this fervor, this youth-generated fervor, uh, that somehow something wonderful is happening to the Egyptians and it takes your, your mind off what's happening at home as uh, rations are being cut, even fuel rations in the States now, to the elderly in some places, thanks to Obama. But that's the little print in the newspapers as opposed to the, the big stories of someone else's supposed happiness as more puppet regimes are installed in place across the world. And that's really what's, what's happening in, in Egypt. It was time for the old fellow to go. He'd served them well. And he will leave eventually with lots of his loot. They always do that with the, their pals. And he'll live happily ever after, he and his family. And that's how it was done. They did the same thing a long time ago with Uganda, when Idi Amin uh, was forced out. And he left with, with millions and millions of pounds worth of uh, his loot with his family. And he got a beautiful place in California and somewhere else across the world too. So they're all pals with it, and it's time for them to go. And they know it. They're in for a particular amount of time. And as, as I say, it's, it's geopolitics, but there's more to it than that. And I'll, and I'll touch on this when I come back from this break. Hi, folks, we're back, and this is Cutting Through the Matrix. And there's an old saying, you know, it says, Fool me once, shame on you, and fool me twice, shame on me. And we should always remember that because when is your media going to be your friend? They're, they're suddenly your friend, and they, they're chewing for some poor downtrodden people somewhere across the planet. The same media that keeps it quiet when they're plundering those same countries uh, and uh, and suddenly they're your friend. Uh, it's just astonishing how folk fall into it. We're given our arguments. We're given the topics to even to talk about because technically we should be talking about nothing about what's, except what's happening back home where you're trying to get uh, back what your parents and grandparents fought to, to achieve in the first place. We've lost everything. I'm going to put up a, a video tonight, and it shows you um, Brzezinski when he went over to Afghanistan to stir up the jihad. And I've, I've had this up before, this particular video. I'll put this up with another one and this article. And uh, you actually hear him talking to uh, what was the beginning of the Muslim Brotherhood, where he was stirring them to fight the Soviets who had gone into Afghanistan at that time. And so it's, it's good to know the, the players and things and who's behind it and what's happening to understand anything at all. And you've got to have some kind of memory, and you have to put two and two together for yourselves. Uh, this article here says, uh, Obama's calls for the resignation of Mubarak came as no surprise to anyone who's been watching this to any length at all. It's well worth going into who the players are in this attempted revolution. Last year, April 6th, and Kefaya kicked off the rebellion, and the Muslim Brotherhood is sustaining it. These are the trademark of Brzezinski Soros puppets that are used, always used to kick off these United Nations soft power revolutions. The non-governmental organizations, the student groups, and Leninist vanguards attached to Wall Street foundations, and that's a fact, folks, that's who runs the Leninist bunch. In this case, the Freedom House Foundation, the International Center on Nonviolent Conflict, and the International Crisis Group. And I've mentioned all these a few weeks ago because you find that Brzezinski and these boys happen to run all of them. It's the same MO as in all other color revolutions. For example, Tunisia, Iran, and the Ukraine. The coordinating factor here is International Crisis Group, a United Nations front staffed by people such as Brzezinski, George Soros, Wesley Clark, Solana, Shimon Perez, and, of course, El Baradi. This is the guy who was chosen to take over. 
That's the latter one. The motive here is to install a puppet Islamo-socialist regime similar to the ones in Iraq and Afghanistan. Baradeh is the guy chosen to bring it in, and the Muslim Brotherhood will be its pillar for its sustaining force. The Muslim Brotherhood deserves a, a section of its own here. The MB, it's not men in black, it's the Muslim Brotherhood, has always been the prime British intelligence asset in the region, being instrumental during the Nasser affair. It's an incredibly important player in the entire Middle East, given the power of its influence networks. Its function has always been to take leadership over the Sunnah and get get an anti-Shia jihad going. This divide and rule game has helped keep the region in tension ever since World War II and has now been played out like never before. For NATO, these MB goals are the good radical Muslims. They're ardent Fabian socialists, and by the way, they are socialists uh, at their inner circle, and actually Marxists, a lot of them too, at their inner circle, and they're the ones who provided the manpower on the ground networks to set up the NATO protectorates of Kosovo, Albania, and Bosnia. The MB is also the breeding ground for characters like Ayman al-Zawahiri and many other organizers of Al-Qaeda during the 1980s. There's no reason whatsoever to suppose their cooperation has somehow ended in the meantime. That cooperation was alive and well, remember, up until 2001, yet that subject is rarely, if ever, discussed on the mainstream. And that's true, too, because you're not supposed to know what's going on. The objective, it says, nothing here is happening by chance, the plans for North Africa and the Middle East are laid out in Brzezinski and Bernard Lewis's and the PNAC doctrine. The first stage was to create what Brzezinski called imperial mobilizations into the region to establish a permanent international military presence. That was accomplished with the Iraq and the Afghanistan wars. At the same time, Brzezinski said in his book, The The Grand Chessboard, published in 1997, that imperial mobilization would come hand in hand with the setting up of a police state structure in the West. You think these guys don't know where they're going? The next stage, stage is to completely shred the region bit by bit, nation by nation. This will be done through these collectivist Islamo-socialist regimes that are meant to destroy traditional Muslim culture, and that's a fact. They must destroy the culture, create civil wars and even regional wars in the medium and long run. And that's true, too, because Brzezinski and Kissinger both said it would be, be better if we had factional wars going and civil wars after we've been in and we leave the, the country, what's left of the countries to them. Once we've bombed them out of existence, it would be good to, to keep going with civil wars for a long time. In the end, the whole area will have been deculturalized, wrecked, and broken up into many, many states, which will be uh, production hubs run by global agencies such as the IMF and the World Bank, and policed by international forces. In other words, the end of the nation-state and the coming of a neo-feudalist system run by international financiers using international agencies as their enforcement arms. This, of course, will not happen within a vacuum. During this period, many real terror and panic migrations will be exported into Europe and the economic downturns caused by the restlessness in the Middle East, particularly in oil prices, will cause the Western economies to further collapse into a poverty to class status. These things will allow for the order out of chaos projection that was described in the 2006 Strategic Trends Report by British Military Intelligence. And I've got it on my website, that whole report. Um... It's 90-odd pages. Go into the archives section and also check it out later with the the U.S. one, which came out later in the year. It's identical for the future planning. It says here it's also the great transition that the United Nations and its many institutes harp on about the complete end of the nation-state and its replacement with global and regional management bodies. Now, what was the head of the European Union said recently? And I I read it from their own newspaper. He said it was the end of the nation state. Remember, folks, constant crisis and conflict to allow for that transitional process, economic, social, cultural standardization of the entire globe. In the end, a few decades from now, these boys expect to achieve their system of global governance, whereby local populations will be ruled by continental authorities who will in turn report to a worldwide body, a world state. It's just the old project of a world society of scientific socialism and high-tech feudalism that was put forth by characters such as Hegel, Bentham, St. Simon and Lenin and has now been carried out by monopoly capitalists. People have to go uh, keep wishing up the techniques being used and denouncing them for what they are. 
and in that effect. So I'll put that link up tonight at cuttingthroughthematrix.com at the end. And you'll, as I say, you'll see Brzezinski on the video too, uh, stirring up the jihad and the Muslim Brotherhood to have a holy war. That's what he says. Yours is a holy war, as long as they were fighting the Soviets at that time. But that's the reality of it. I mean, you, people have to stop being fooled. Stop being fooled. Have you noticed too, the young women too, who, who are often the spokespeople for, for these groups over in Egypt are speaking perfect Oxford English? Hmm? Haven't you noticed things like little hints like that? 